Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Spring has sprung, or is about to spring. I think it might be springing this Sunday, but this video is going out Friday, so just in time for spring, I am coming at you with my classics recommendations that I think are suitable for spring. And this, like all of my seasonal recommendations videos, which I think I will have in a playlist and link down below, will just be my initial gut feeling that these are deserving to be read during spring. But none of them are actually, I think, like, I was about to say about Easter bunnies. I don't know what classic would be about Easter bunnies, but you know what I mean. These are just like what I think fits the spring vibes. So I am just going to start with the number one one that I think is the most suitable for spring, and that is Far From the Matting Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I love this book so much. It follows Bathsheba Everdeen, and she has come into her uncle's farm. And so she has to run this farm, and she meets Gabriel Oak, who I believe is a shepherd or a sheep herder, um, and he helps her along the way, and she gets herself into many scrapes romantically and just in running the farm and it is described so beautifully especially I think with like the sheep herding Thomas Hardy is just I've said it before but just so good at describing nature and he's just so good at what he does and I think the sheep herding scenes in particular are what stick out to me and make me think yes this is for spring and Thomas Hardy I don't know it just the book gives me a feeling of like new beginnings and new life and second chances and renewal and those are kind of the feelings that it sparks up in me when I think about that book or when I was reading that book that's what I felt and so for that reason I think it is perfect for spring Thomas Hardy is perfect for any time of year read any of his books any time of year and then come back to me and tell me how you felt about them because I love him so much and I could talk about him all day, but I will not. I will move on to the second recommendation that I have, which is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. And this is an excellent book. I've read it, I believe, twice and both times I studied it, I want to say, um, but it follows Janie and it basically follows her awakening as a woman and just wanting to find love. And she goes through a lot of twists and turns to get there. I believe she has three marriages throughout the course of the novel and it's just her quest to just find that, find what she wants, to find a man that she loves and that loves her and that treats her well and it deals with her awakening and realizing that she wants that. There's an image of a pear tree that is sort of coming into bloom and budding and it's representative of her sexuality and I just think it is a very good book to read during the spring because of that reason. Um, again, these are all very loose definitions of spring, but I think just the idea of this new life awakening in her and just her realizing what she wants from life and sort of her blossoming into adulthood and womanhood I think is very suitable for spring. I love this book. It is so well done. The imagery is excellent the ideas that run throughout. It's just so interesting to look at and it's also just a very good read so I would highly recommend it for spring or again for any time of year um, but if you would like a spring read maybe this one. My next one is a Jane Austen novel which is actually kind of rare for me. Um, I'm not the hugest biggest Jane Austen fan. I appreciate her for what she does and for her place in literary history but I can't really say that I enjoy reading her in the way that I enjoy reading other authors. Um, but I would recommend Emma for spring. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be my first choice for a spring read, but I know people love Jane Austen's wit and her humor and her social commentary for good reason because she is excellent at it. And I think Emma is the one that I think of when I think of spring. And it might just be because the new adaptation is very like springy and bright and colorful but I think it still works. Um, and Emma follows Emma, who when we meet her has a lot of flaws. She is a matchmaker, she is a meddler, she thinks she can meddle into everyone's lives, she is spoiled, she is entitled, all of these things. And throughout the course of the novel, we sort of grow with Emma as she changes and realizes her mistakes and realizes that maybe this is not the way she should be interacting with other people. And so I think the entire trajectory of the novel is us just growing with Emma through her experiences that she has. Of course, as with all Jane Austen's, marriage is involved, matchmaking is involved, um, matches in general are involved, and I just think the overall atmosphere of Emma is very suited to sp the springtime. Um, I think particularly at, towards the end of the novel, they're on a picnic, and the picnic just feels very springy because it's a picnic. I mean, maybe, are they even on a picnic or are they just like touring someone's house 
like often happens. I don't know, but I know in the new adaptation, they presented it as a picnic. So I would also recommend that adaptation. And I think that's why I'm thinking of it as a spring novel, but I think it is. And I also think Jane Austen in general lends herself well to spring because it's a comedy of manners. It's very witty and light and it's very sharp, but it's also just very bouncy. I don't know. Her dialogue is so witty and funny to read. So I do think she lends herself well to spring. And I think Emma is probably the one that I would choose for spring if you were just to pick one. I think the one I wouldn't choose is like Mansfield Park or Northanger Abbey probably. So Emma is the way to go in my opinion. The next one is from Mr. Shakespeare himself and it is As You Like It. I have been reading a lot of Shakespeare recently so I feel like I am, I wouldn't say qualified, but I feel like I kind of have a grasp of Shakespeare much more than I did maybe like last year. Last spring wouldn't have been able to give you any recommendations at all, but this spring I am going to recommend As You Like It by William Shakespeare. And mainly because this is a comedy and I think comedies lend themselves well to spring, very light, very bouncy. I don't know if like light and bouncy is that even, I don't know, but that's how I think of it. Um, and As You Like It follows Boy oh boy, um, a lot of things. We open up with Orlando who is lamenting that his brother has cheated him out of his inheritance. He is kept sort of low down and the idea is sort of that Orlando has these natural like inheritances that come out that he is like his father who is a good man and then his brother Oliver is sort of the one that has the monetary inheritance but he doesn't have those natural gifts that Orlando has and therefore the brother's jealous of him he cut him out of the inheritance all that and then we meet Rosalind and her friend Celia or her cousin Celia I don't really know but um Rosalind is the daughter of a banished duke and Celia is the daughter of the brother duke that banished the other duke if that makes sense and they are very close they are like sisters and it deals with those four characters along with some characters in the pastoral setting that will come later in the novel and just all the matches and the misunderstandings and the disguises that delightfully come in Shakespeare comedies. Some of the big themes I think are the contrast between the pastoral setting and the shepherds and that sort of life and then the life of the court which is just filled with betrayal. So I think the pastoral settings in particular are what make me think that this is very springy. Um, there's this shepherd, I forgot his name, but he is hopelessly in love with this shepherdess Phoebe and their scenes are really fun to read about. It's just very fun and delightful. I really enjoyed my time with As You Like It. The ending was just, it made me smile because it was just so absurd how everything like falls into place as in I feel like all the Shakespeare comedies that I've read but I loved it so much. It's just such a springy read, I think, and I would highly recommend it regardless of the season. Again, I'm gonna stop seeing that, but for spring, I think it's great. The next one is a little bit of an iffy one, I think, and it is Animal Farm by George Orwell. If you've read Animal Farm or if you know George Orwell, you might be like Valerie. I don't know if I want to be frightened into the kind of future Orwell envisions. Like, don't give me that. Those aren't the spring feelings I want to feel. Um, but Animal Farm has animals and it takes place on a farm, which is springy. So if you want a sort of darker spring read, I think Animal Farm, it basically follows, I forgot the farmer's name, but there are all these animals living on this farm. There's this farmer, they overthrow the farmer, get him out, and then the pigs become like the leaders of the farm and it <laughs> and it's very dark and it sort of describes how this takes a dark turn and how you know people to come into power and just become the thing that they replaced which sounds perhaps too much <laughs> for spring that's a lot i know but i love animal farm so much and i wanted to fit it in here because i think it's also its alternative title is like a fairy story <laughs> I think, which is again, just not actually, that almost makes it sound worse. I think Animal Farm is a less menacing name than A Fairy Story by George Orwell. But if you want a darker spring read, Animal Farm, I think is the way to go. The next two that are sort of just like combined is Two Works by Homer, which is the Odyssey and the Iliad. I don't have much to say in way of summary of these books other than the Iliad follows the Trojan War and then the Odyssey follows Odysseus who fought in the Trojan War and his journey to get home, his very long, very arduous journey to get home. 
I think this, I don't know why, but when I read Greek epic poetry, I just feel like I am there. I don't know. This is probably not making sense, but just like the images that it invokes of them like roasting the meat all the time, or them laying out in the sun, or them fighting and being really hot, it all just feels very like nature-y, like I'm in the environment, I'm in ancient Greece. Which might not make sense, but in my head it's a perfect spring read, and if you are going to read either, read them during spring. I think just like the depictions of the ocean, of nature, of just all the natural forces come across very strongly. And I know me just saying like they roast meat, you should read it during spring, probably doesn't make sense. But to me, they just, they are really good for the spring and they sort of give me like those feelings that I would want to feel during spring. Just all these natural elements that can sometimes be treacherous but also can be really beautiful. So I would recommend those two if that sounds like it would also give you the spring feelings that you would want. If not, <laughs> there are plenty of others on this list. The last recommendation is a poetry recommendation or rather just a poet and that is Wordsworth. I love Wordsworth. He's one of the poets that I've discovered that I really love. And he was one of the romantic poets. He, he really sparked that movement of romantic poetry that shifted away from classical poetry. I believe it was called classical. I don't really know, but he sparked that like shift, that defined shift in English poetry. And he basically just really focuses on nature and how it makes him feel and really just feelings and nature. And I think his poetry is so just good. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Discussing one of the great poets and all I can say is Wordsworth, you are good. He just makes me feel what he was feeling when he was looking at nature. One of my favorite lesson activities I've ever done, I think in an English class, is that we read a letter by Wordsworth's sister who was describing daffodils and we knew that it was the day that Wordsworth saw that same field of daffodils that he later would write about in his poem, The Daffodils. And so we looked at that, at his sister's sort of view of the daffodils that was very just like a description, and then we looked at what Wordsworth did with that image and how he brought us into the field of the daffodils with his poem. And it was just amazing. I would highly recommend that poem, actually. Um, if you want to just start, just get a little taste of Wordsworth, I think The Daffodils is a nice place to start. I know another famous one is I Wandered Like a Lonely Cloud, Like a Wandering Cloud, something like that. If you just search up like Wordsworth and Cloud, it'll probably come up. But I just, I love his poetry. But anyway, those are all the recommendations I have for spring. If you end up reading any of these during spring or just ever, please let me know what your thoughts on them are. Let me know if you have any spring recommendations because I would love to hear them. And I would also just love to hear what makes a springy book to you. I'm curious because I feel like some of this was a little weird and I'm just curious what other people's definition of like a spring book is. But anyway, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.